Hello, everyone. This is Paul, and I am joined here by my wonderful daughter, Peggle. <laughs> How does it feel what? to be in a father-daughter podcast? It's because I cut my hair. <laughs> yes, actually. <laughs> or would you prefer us to be twins instead? Oh, goodness. I don't know which one would be better. Well, either way, Peggle's here, and she's going to be showing this on her own channel. So hopefully she's not too uh, overbearing for you. I'll try to keep her in check. Okay. <laughs> so just in case you guys uh, can't see the name of the title of the video, we are going to be reacting to the June 2024, or is it called the 2024 June Nintendo Direct in Australia? I think it's just Nintendo Direct June 2024. <laughs> Oh, okay, because I was thinking, like, you know, you guys have your numbers a little bit rearranged, so is it the 2420 June? <laughs> no. <laughs> well, it's June for both of us, so at least there's a kind of. Because I watch the American one anyway, I don't watch the Australian one. <laughs> there's an Australian one? I, I, maybe there is, I know there's a UK version. I knew about that, I just didn't know if there was an Australian one. I wonder if there is. Maybe I should check that next time. <laughs> yeah, well, <laughs> for now, let's go ahead and set a few rules for the audience. I'll go first, and if there's anything you want to add, you can go ahead and add them. We decided we're not going to cover games that were already announced at something like Summer Game Fest or if Nintendo posted something on Twitter or on their YouTube channel. So no Luigi's Mansion 2, no LEGO Horizons, and no Nintendo World Championships because it's like... They're just confirming that it exists. They hardly gave any new information. The other rule is that they, we're only going to be talking about games that we both like. So we won't be talking about any of the cringe stuff, like all that Funko nonsense. That Funko stuff's pretty funny, though. <laughs> there is one game that we're going to talk about that neither of us are going to play, but we respect it and we respect the fan base. So we're going to talk about it because you guys will feel like we're terrible if we don't. Yeah. <laughs> And the last rule is that we have a timer on, so we are going to keep every announcement at five minutes. Do you have yeah. anything you'd like to add? No, you, you did the rules perfectly. <laughs> and the last thing I want to add to my audience is I have to use my old headset for the sake of being able to hear her without disrupting the house. So if I sound radically different or if my S sounds annoy you, it's because I had to use the old microphone temporarily, but it will be back for future videos where I'm by myself. Anything you'd like to say to your audience? No. <laughs> good. All right. Sounds good that you're so chill. In that case, you can go ahead and start the timer for the first entry on the direct. Let's talk about Mario and Luigi Brotherhood. So this is the first brand new Mario and Luigi game done by a company other than Alpha Dream. Rest in peace. We still don't know which company it is, but some people have suggested it might be Next Level Games because the animation where Mario was kicking the shell was very similar to how he kicks the soccer ball in the Mario Strikers games. What stood out to me about this trailer is one, Kevin Afghani's Luigi voice is really incredible. His Mario voice gonna take some getting used to, but I think if you were to look at it in the same way as what happened to Kenny James when he took over for Scott Burns as Bowser. Kenny put his own spin on Bowser's voice, and I think we've all just come to get used to it. So maybe they told Kevin, like, hey, don't make it exactly like Charles, but have it like, have the spirit of Charles. You know what I'm saying? Yeah. So what do you think about this? Because I don't think you've ever played the other Mario and Luigi games. Yeah, because I think they were all on the DSs, weren't they? They were either on the DS or the 3DS. And the first one yeah. was like Boy Advance. So I guess that's, yeah, so, by extension, a DS game. Yeah, so I never had a Game Boy, never got to have a 3DS. I did have a DS, but I didn't have Mario, Mario & Luigi, so... But I knew, when I got older, I did know of its, of its existence. So I was like, when I saw... saw it, It's so funny, because Mario & Luigi has a very distinctive animation that you know straight away. So the minute I saw the eyes, I was like, <laughs> that's Mario <and> & Luigi! <laughs> it, look, it looks really pretty. Like, I was amazed how pretty the graphics are and the music's really funny. The subtitle always makes me giggle. I've seen some memes about the subtitle. Yeah, I guess, I mean, I'm not sure what you're thinking, but I know for me, I thought it felt like a little bit of a letdown because ever since Partners in Time and Beyond, they've always been a play on words of an existing pun. 
like partners in time is a plan words of partners in crime bowser's inside story is like the inside scoop dream team needs no explanation paper jam same thing whereas this is like what, what kind of pun can you make out of brothership is it like a play on words of airship because that's not very funny if that's the case i'm not sure it might have something to do with, with the story they might have some sort of brotherly bond that we haven't seen before or something during the game who knows well maybe because it's not alpha dream maybe they don't have the creative <laughs> name calling process that that other company did <laughs> Uh, yeah, probably. <laughs> so what did you think about the idea that this is the first Mario RPG since Super Paper Mario to have original characters? Yeah, that's that's insane. When was the, um, the last one? Uh, well, I guess Sticker Star had Kirsty, but that was like within the rules of the stickers. It wasn't like a Mario-ish character. So the last time a Mario RPG had original characters was back in 2013 with Mario and Luigi Dream Team. Oh my gosh. So it's been that's... a very long time since Nintendo has allowed their studios to just go hog wild without just over relying on toads. We didn't see a single toad in the trailer. No, we didn't. How crazy is that? Yeah, um, about time, right? <laughs> yeah, it, it's good that they're bringing back things that have been a long time since the last one. So I, I've seen everyone's excitement of Mario and Luigi online. So I, I'm happy for them. I'm happy. It, it's it's well deserved, especially at the end of the Switch's lifespan. <laughs> Well, I'm not the type of person that thinks too hard about the end slash the start of the Switch's life. To me, I'm like, hey, I don't have the budget to get the successor, so I'm glad the Switch has a couple more games so I can yeah. keep the current system. Another thing I'd like to add is uh, I'm typically more of a fan of the Paper Mario games than the Mario and Luigi RPGs. Sometimes I find that the controls are a bit hard to get used to, but... I'm hoping that uh, now that it's on the Switch, there will be some quality of life enhancements to make it more user friendly. Because the Bowser's Inside Story remake was pretty great. I loved that. It's the only one I've ever beaten. So <laughs> hopefully this will be number two. Yeah. What about you? Do you yeah, think this will be like your entry point? I don't know. I might I might give, give it a go. See how we do. If you're willing to pay the $60 or however much it is in Australia. Probably be about $70 or $80 here. Oh, so. <laughs> It's okay, I have a job. <laughs> I can do it. Uh, well, so, I guess we'll get into our um, Yes, I was just going to say the same thing. So next <laughs> yeah. we have Fairy Tale 2. Like, tail as in the waggy thing at the backside of certain animals. Not the, like, yes. a tail like a book. Uh, I know yes. nothing about this. This is actually the only item on our list that was strictly her, so I'll let you take over from here. Yeah, the, the reason it's called Tail is it, there's actually a meaning behind it that they talk about in the show. It's like it's this amazing quote that they have in the show. It includes fairies having tails and stuff. It's really it's really cool. But no, this this absolutely baffled me because I think I, I said I said to myself a while back, I'm, I'm like, man, I would love if they do a sequel for this because the first game, it only has... Um, I guess half of season one at the end of season two. So I was thinking, man, they need to they need to do a, another game or at least a DLC for hmm. the third season. But I was like, uh, it might be a while because that the first game came out in 2020, I believe. But then it just came out of nowhere, and I was like, are you kidding me? No way! So um, it, I think it's just strictly going to be the third season because the te technically fourth season um, isn't even out yet. <laughs> So I'm pretty excited for this because um, it's one of those. It's also a tactical RPG, so like like turn-based and all that. And my opinion on those are not great, but this one does it in a way that I can understand and handle. So if so, Fire Emblem were to have these characters, you would play it? Yep, yeah, I reckon. <laughs> oh, okay. Um, I see how it works now. <laughs> good, good characters um, are better than good gameplay for you. <laughs> The only issue I've always had with, with Fairy Tale is that um, they don't do dub voices in English. They just do, they just keep the Japanese, which mm. is fine. I can read subtitles. I can get over that. I just wish, like they do for other anime games, like Dragon Ball is a good example. They they make sure they do an English version of the game, but they don't for Fairy Tale. But that's fine. If I'm remembering correctly, I don't think they had English voice acting in the direct. I don't think they did. I couldn't hear it because I had like six other voices in my ears, so I couldn't I couldn't tell. 
but there I was... don't think I heard it. I know one of the games did, but it was one that I wasn't interested in, so maybe it was this one. It probably was Fairy Tale. But yeah, I'm I'm very happy for um the sequel. I can't wait for it to come out. It's coming this year, so that's good. Well, I have literally no idea about anything about this game. Didn't even know there was a Fairy Tale one. But the one I thing I've I... heard lots of people online say that I didn't even know there was a first one. <laughs> Well, the one thing I will commend is that I don't know of too many games that are coming out that are strictly like a retelling of seasons of anime. So I do think that's a pretty neat concept. It'd be cool if like Death Note had something like that, because that's one of the oh, only definitely. animes I've watched. Yeah, Death Note would be cool. But that's a discussion for another day. All right, Let's so the it. next game we have is Donkey Kong Country Returns HD. Not the biggest fan of the title, but otherwise, I was pretty excited about this because I love the original Donkey Kong Country Returns. I loved the 3DS version, but a lot of people were sad because the 3DS version has worse frame rate and worse graphics. But yet it introduced the easy mode, so it had like more of a balanced difficulty and it had like brand new levels. So this is sort of combining the two versions, but yet at the same time it's not up to the graphical standards of Tropical Freeze. So I guess in that sense it's a little disappointing, but if you love the original game, <laughs> you'll be glad that you can play it in a version with traditional controls and HD and with 60 frames. Not that I know much about Yay. frames, but <laughs> I've heard that it's, I've heard that the more frames a game has, the better your inputs are. Yeah. So in a game where you need very precise platforming, I guess that would be a big help. Yeah. What do you Definitely. think about this game? Um, I played Donkey Kong Country One and Two. I don't think I've played Returns because I don't think that's on the Switch. If it is, I probably it's on the Wii and the 3DS at present, okay, and the Wii U night. Virtual Console. Rest in peace. Rest in peace. <laughs> um. Okay, so yeah, I haven't played Returns yet, but I've played Donkey Kong Country 1 and 2 at the very least. So I, I, I recognize the music, so that made me happy to see it. For a HD game, it doesn't look too bad. It, it looks pretty good. Well, I guess maybe I'm a bit spoiled by what they did with Paper Mario 2. Ah, uh, Paper Mario 2 is, does look very good, but I think um, since it's called a HD, it's going to be how probably Luigi's Mansion 2 is going to be. It's not going to be fantastic graphics, but it's going to look more cleaner. So. Yeah, I mean, I saw a video just a couple of minutes before we started this call by a guy named Demich, and he said, why is it that when Nintendo puts HD at the end of their titles, the game looks like it is very low effort, but if they just keep it at the original title, then it's like this fantastic over-the-top remake. Yeah, that's a, that's a very good question. <laughs> Like, look at Skyward Sword HD compared to the Wii version, you can hardly tell the difference. Yeah, you really can't. Except the frame rate, but again, I'm not an expert on that. So I think this is probably going to be a rental for me, but like a very high rental, because I love the newer Donkey Kong Country games, and Tropical Freeze was amazing, so I hope more people can experience the predecessor to Tropical Freeze. All right, so this one kind of came out of nowhere for me because I wasn't expecting a third one on the Switch, but here we are, Super Mario Party Jamboree. When everyone was claiming that Mario Party Superstars should have gotten DLC, they said, Now back in my day, we didn't have DLC. We had four Mario Parties on the GameCube. So let's just do that again with the Switch because we want to finish our games. <laughs> So the gist for this one is they're bringing back motion controls. They are bringing back the smorgasbord of characters that Super Mario Party had. And they have five new boards and two returning ones. One of which, Western Land, is my favorite board in Mario Party 2. So I am stoked that that's the one they chose. <laughs> and I, uh, I'm just excited to have another Mario Party that looks like it's made with passion and care. and. Looks like it's combining the best elements of the previous two games. And I know you're yeah, probably going to get it. I, I'm going to get it. I didn't expect it either. I was like, I think in the, when I saw it, I was like, ain't no way this is here. What the heck is this doing here? <laughs> I don't mind Super Mario Party. I think um, like the amount of characters you can have, I think that's great. Um, I thought the boards were good. Um, some of the mini games in Super Mario Party, are, I think it's, really, it's a good game. It's just the online problem with that. Yeah. that that's the same with Super Mario, uh, Mario Party Superstars as well. That one's absolutely amazing, but the online has 
gotten very bad as of recent. Yeah, so, it was great when we first played it. Yeah, and now it's just terrible. I don't know what's happened. So hopefully this one does better, <laughs> but it looks really good. Uh, there were some parts, some mini games that I was like, this could have looked polished nicer, but um, the mini games look fun. Um, like I said, I like the amount of characters we have. My Party Superstars annoyed me with the limits. <laughs> Uh, the mini, the, like the mini games look fun. The other versions of the game they have, I think they have like a race car one. Um, They're bringing back the car, but in a good way. Yeah, um, and I think they have something involving Bowser or something like that. Yeah, so, which is weird because Bowser's already confirmed to be a playable character. So, are they going to have two yeah. Bowsers? I think they're also trying to mix stuff with the the one that was on the Wii U. I don't know which one that was, but um, oh, that was Mario Party 10. Yeah, so maybe they're mixing in a bit of that as well. So Ooh, not a bad idea. That'd be cool yeah. to see a modern take on Bowser Party. They did have a 20 player mode, which I was like, how do you even get that many people to play Mario? <laughs> I did hear mixed opinions on Bowser Party if they do add it because Bowser was like completely broken. <laughs> Yeah, um, that. never played it, but I've heard mixed reports about it. Yeah, but I'm excited. This is also coming out on my birthday, so thanks oh, Nintendo for great. birthday presents. <laughs> so, uh, you haven't played the N64 trilogy of Mario Parties, have you? No. Nah. So to you, it's just seven brand new boards. Yeah, so, um, <sighs> so how this will be exciting. Feel? It'll be good. I'm, 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 I'm keen. I'm always keen to see old stuff coming back into new stuff to see what the hype was about. <laughs> Well, let's just say uh, Western Land looks significantly better because it was pretty much just exclusively cardboard and like pixelated images on the N64. Yeah, it does now I just have good. to hope. Now I just have to hope they bring back the costumes because they didn't do that in Mario Party Superstars. But they've had three or was it two? No, three stinking years since Superstars. They can bring back the costumes in that amount of time. Yeah. Bring back the costumes, make them all dress up like cowboys for the Western one. <laughs> <laughs> and I loved how they took Coconut Mall and made it into a Mario Party board. That's perfect. <laughs> <laughs> so yeah, I think the graphics look great. I'm a bit iffy on the motion controls, but hopefully there are options to turn them off. I like the there being a lot of characters. I think the new boards look great, but I'm glad to see the old boards as well, especially because Mario Party 1 is nearly unplayable <laughs> nowadays. So it's great to have Mario's Rainbow Castle back. Even if that board was stupidly simple, it's still great to get some more Mario Party 1 in there. Yeah. Do you think this is going to be better than Mario Party Superstars based on what you've seen? I think it will be. I mean, they've got more mini games. Like I said, bigger, more characters, so I can finally play as Bowser again. So. <laughs> That's oh, <I'm> great. <laughs> well, this also, fun fact, let's make it quick, because I think we're running down the timer, but this will be the first time we'll hear Kevin Afghani's take on Waluigi. Oh, it's not a remake, goodness. so therefore it's going to be his voice. And we're here with Wario as well, if well, he's doing Wario. Well, that is why we're moving. But like Waluigi okay. hasn't had a chance to do, assuming he's even going to do Waluigi, which he probably will. This he is the first will. time we'll hear Giselle Hernandez as Daisy in a Mario Party game. Mm -hmm. I think everyone else is still the same actor. But we'll I think Peach is going to have her low voice like she did in Showtime. <laughs> I don't mind her low voice. I think it's it's nice that she had a bit of variety and sounded more like Anya Taylor-Joy. Sorry, Anya Taylor-Joy. It's pronounced like an aneurysm according to the actress herself. <laughs> then let's move on to a new Zelda game, but with a twist. You can create things. It's actually a Legend of Zelda game. That wasn't a twist. You that was a twist that in, in my eyes. No, you, they've already done that in Wand of Gamelon and Zelda's Adventure on the CDI. So it's they not a new concept. Link. <laughs> it's the first probably good new concept for Zelda's <laughs> movie character. <laughs> are you secretly hoping she'll be voiced by Bonnie Jean Wilbur, or are you just like, screw those CDI games, let's go to the future? Uh, this is the future, please. No CDI stuff, please. So, you're not as much of a Zelda diehard fan as I am, but yet, this somehow made your list, so what do you think? Like, do you think it'll be the kind of game you'll get into? Not sure, but when I saw, first saw it, I thought, is this a remake of A Link to the Past? Because it looked so much like Link to the Past, but then I thought, is this something like another Link's Awakening? 
or something like that. But then they said, then they showed we're playing a Zelda. I'm like, oh no, this is a brand new game. <laughs> Hold on a minute, what? Because I didn't think there'd be anything else after Tears of the Kingdom for the Switch. I thought, okay, they're done. They're probably going to wait for another Zelda game till the next console. But then, bam, here comes this. And I'm like, where did this yeah. come from? <laughs> I guess I was kind of thinking the same thing. I thought if there was going to be another Zelda on the Switch, it would be like a remake. I didn't think there'd be another brand new game. And it's coming this year, too. So, like, that's only a little over a year after Tears of the Kingdom came out, which is insane. Maybe yeah, that's why they yeah. delayed the game, because they had to work on this at the same time. Maybe. Who knows? Um, yeah, you can create things. Everyone's making jokes that we're going to beat the final boss with, like, a chair. <laughs> that would be <laughs> fun. I mean, there are people who have beaten Ganondorf with twigs in Breath of the Wild, so you never know. Well, I'm sure people come up with some amazing challenges. Like, I can only create this. Well, seeing as I was that guy in Tears of the Kingdom whose brilliant idea was just connect a bunch of things together to make a ladder, <laughs> I'm sure <laughs> I'll have the worst solutions for the puzzles possible. Uh, it looks good, though. It, it looks good. And like, like you said, it's coming out this year very soon, actually. I think September they said it was, so... That's about, what, three, four months away? So That's eerily close. And it's that's using really the, close. And it's using the art style from the Link's Awakening remake. So, of course, it's yeah. going to look amazing. Do you like the subtitle? It, what's it? E Echoes of Wisdom? I think it's I, amazing. I like it. That's a great subtitle. Well, it actually fits this time. Like, Breath of the yeah. Wild was just trying to be poetic. But this... Like, it's called Echoes because you're echoing the objects, and it's called Wisdom because Zelda has the Triforce of Wisdom. And yeah, it's called yeah. The Legend of Zelda because you're actually playing a Zelda for once. For once. This should, be, this should have been called Legend of Link because we're not playing as, as Link. Or maybe they should have called it The Wand of Gamelon too, because she does carry a wand. Yeah. Maybe it'll be revealed that it actually is from Gamelon, and then like Gamelon will be the alternate universe where Link was sucked into, and then everyone there will be like horrendous cartoon variations of each other. You oh guys should see her face right now. When I was in a call with other friends, someone asked, so which part of this game is going to come in from the timeline? And I said, clearly the one where Link is dead. Did you not just see him? <laughs> yeah, I, I think it's probably going to be the Link to the Past timeline. Yeah. I'm not much of a theorizer, but I think it's fair to say that that's the one, because it's Kid Link, and we all know the child timeline has nothing but Kid Link in it. And yeah. it's only do in it, the... Is Ganon, do you think Ganon's going to appear in this? Or... Uh, he already did. Oh, did he? I didn't notice. In the opening <laughs> cutscene, when you saw Link facing him. Oh, okay, then, yeah, I probably just didn't notice, because I think I was too busy going, IS THIS LINK TO THE PAST?! <laughs> so, no, so maybe, we'll hear, maybe we won't hear proper Matt Mercer voice acting, but we might hear some sounds, or, I don't Something know. tells me there won't be any voice acting, because I don't I think there's been a two... No, I take that back. Wand of Gamelon and Zelda's Adventure both had voice acting. So this will be a step backwards from the CDI games if it doesn't have voice acting. Okay. Yep. Did you ever think you'd hear that in modern times? Uh, no. <laughs> well, hey, now that Arzet, the Jewel of Faramore, is on the Switch, we could be seeing a CDI renaissance. Oh my gosh. I just want HD remakes of Twilight Princess and Wind Waker, please. <laughs> Maybe they'll come on the next system. But for the time being, it's great to finally have another 2D Zelda game for the first time since 2013. Well, yep. 2015 if you count Triforce Heroes, which I don't. But who does count Triforce Heroes? <laughs> so next we have a port of a game that was released on, was it PS4 or PS5? Is this? Well, Stray is coming to the Switch. Oh yeah, PS5. PS5, and it's being downgraded to fit on a portable. And I think it still looks pretty great. Like, I... I, I was shocked. I watched streams of Stray, but like obviously Twitch is going to downplay the graphics. So to me, I was like, this looks phenomenal. <laughs> like, I don't see why everyone's complaining. Probably because they're used to playing it on their TVs, and I'm just a Switch guy, so I don't notice all the ray tracing. Yeah, I was amazed how wonderful it looked as well. I was like, dude, I saw it pop up. I'm like, oh no, this might not look very good. <laughs> and then I was blown away. I was like, what the heck? I would say it might even look better than The Witcher 3. Oh, that would be a good debate. <laughs> but, but then here's the thing. People will, will, will go online saying, 
you make this look amazing, Nintendo, but you make Mortal Kombat 1 look absolutely disgusting. Like, yeah. what's going? What's going? What, what's this hypocrite? <laughs> Different development teams, I think. Because I don't think I Nintendo was directly involved with uh, either of the games. No, they weren't. Um, I don't know who who looks after the Mortal Kombat series, but Stray is looked after by a small indie team. So Probably why. Yeah. But this is good. I can't wait for people to play Stray. It's such a Including good game. Me. I love it. Yeah. I've never I think played Stray. I've, I've seen quite a lot of it. So, like, none of the sport... Uh, I already know like a lot of the spoilers because I did see the ending, but I do like the idea of being able to like jump around in huge environments because yeah. that's what I there love. Are about some, there are some puzzles that you might need to that might require yeah. some thinking. But there was one don't time worry. where I helped, I helped a Twitch streamer with solving the puzzle, so I might actually be better at the game than you. Ah, I, I think I know the combination to the safe, and I was right. Oh, that's easy. <laughs> Once you figure out where to go, <laughs> yeah. I mean, the game doesn't give you that simple enough, I guess, hints. Um, yeah, when you try and I... ask the robot, he's just like, oh, let's just do this. It's like, can you give me a hint yeah. onto where I can go? <laughs> I do remember but, the original yeah. game is not handholdy enough, so I hope they fix that. But considering that it looks like it's just a straight port, I doubt it. But for being a straight port, boy, did they know how to optimize it. Yeah. Yeah. I. I think it's great. I can't, I can't wait because lots of people are like, oh, I can finally play this. I'm like, you can now see how they had to animate 13 different cats into the game. True story. <laughs> it's <laughs> 13 nice. different cats just to, just to make this game. <laughs> That's incredible. <laughs> and from what I've seen of the original version, they did really do a good job on the animations of the cat. Yeah, and I love because it when... they used an actual cat. <laughs> oh, wow. That's cool. Yeah. I mean, Twilight Princess, I used to think that was the gold standard of how they animated Wolf Link, but boy, has times changed since 2006. Yeah, especially, like, because with, with new consoles and that, they're putting specific things on actual people so that they can properly animate people and stuff in games, so doing actual proper face expressions oh. and how they move and stuff. So they, it's like how in movies, how they put all the stuff on them. So I they're mean... doing it for games as well. I mean, they did that for Life is Strange Remastered. That was on the Switch, so yeah. I don't... So they're yeah. So they're doing it that. So now they're doing it with animals as well, like like with cats. The indie team has said online that they struggled so much with this because it took so long because that kid, the cats was so distracted, <laughs> but it worked. <laughs> That's what you call a passion project. Take notes, corporations. <laughs> That's the determination right there. <laughs> oh dear. We're getting into Undertale memes. No Delta <laughs> room this direct, so zero out of ten, I guess. <laughs> but what isn't It'll a zero come. out of ten is what's on the next item, which is Ace Attorney Investigations Collection. I was overjoyed. She was angry, so I'll let her go first so we can get the negativity <laughs> out of the way. Oh, because I haven't finished it yet, so I was like, great, more games to play. Uh, thanks, Nintendo. <laughs> More on my list. Um, and also because I can't stand Edgeworth, but apparently he has he shows his true colours later on, so I guess I'll find out why everyone loves him so much. But yeah, at the moment, he, he annoys me. He is probably, of all the Ace Attorney characters, he probably experiences the most character growth. I'm not going to say how he grows as a character, but I will say that he evolves beyond just the stereotypical overly ambitious prosecutor and you just haven't yeah. gotten far enough to see that but like once you do get far enough you'll start to realize why he's like everyone's favorite prosecutor yeah no as far as my perspective on it as a diehard ace attorney fan who has played every single game in the series even professor late versus phoenix right i was beyond excited because one apollo justice ace attorney trilogy already came out this year and this is gonna come out in the same year. So that's five Ace Attorney games in one year. It's gonna have orchestra pieces. It's gonna have new artwork, although it lets you switch back to the old ones if you don't like it. And the biggest part of all, they're finally localizing Ace Attorney Investigations 2 because it never was released in English. How cool is that? I love what they're doing lately. Like they're like, I think they did that with Trace Memory as well. Uh, release, yeah, with um, well, not specifically with Trace Memory, with uh, Journey into Lost Memories. 
but they just put the two together and like shifted around the story so that they had more of a continuity. Yeah, I love that they're now releasing games that weren't released in America that they're now Mother doing it now. Now they're just gonna Yes <laughs> I was just about to say that, but the three, where are you at? <laughs> And great Ace Attorney uh, Chronicles, same thing. Those games were never released in the West, and now all the critics said they were racist, and all the fans are like, now we see why. <laughs> <laughs> oh, goodness, goodness. <laughs> so this is like, this might be up there with Paper Mario 2 as a Game of the Year contender. Probably oh, won't be boy. a Game of the Year contender, because I remember thinking the original Ace Attorney Investigations was kind of a 7 slash 8 out of 10 kind of game, so... We'll see how much I like it going back to it. But I've heard the second one is significantly better. So the yeah. gist of it is that uh, because Edgeworth is a prosecutor, he uh, has a very different line of reasoning than Phoenix. Instead of just pulling wild ideas out of his head, Edgeworth uses logic to try to figure out like how things make sense. So you gather little tidbits of information and then you enter logic mode to see like if this equals this, therefore I have an idea. You okay, still there was some... some we're still going to be a um, an investigator, even though we're not supposed to do that, because that's right, not how yeah. it works. Yeah, so you're a prosecutor that's on the field, and the cross-examinations are called interrogations, because you're doing it on the field instead of in the courtroom. Oh, okay. No. Oh, <laughs> So we will see how well the new game holds up. I heard the second one has a mode called Logic Chess, so I'm very curious to see how that works out. All right, okay. And they're both <laughs> DS games, so I hope they look significantly better on the Switch. I hope so. <laughs> and as far as chronologically speaking, if you're ever interested in playing them, they take place between the first and second games, sort of. Like, it takes place after the first Ace Attorney, but then, like, in the background of the events of the second game. So I know what I have to do then. <laughs> you would, you'd probably be able to follow along well enough if you just beat Ace Attorney 1. Justice for All, the last case, I would hold off on, but, like, if you were to play, like, Ace Attorney 1, Ace Attorney Investigations, and then Justice for All, you'd probably be fine. Okay. There is one moment where it references Trials and Tribulations, but I think you'll still be fine. You can just ask me. Sounds good. <laughs> so are we ready to move on to the next visual novel masterpiece in the making? We sure are! Let's do it! So the, the Danganronpa people just can't seem to shut up about <laughs> wanting their academy-based killing games. So they're making another Danganronpa, I mean Danganronpa-like, called The Hundred Line Last Defense Academy, where you've got, spoiler alert, lots of students trapped in a building with an animal mascot and they're told to kill people. Although, it seems like the creator uh, was true to his word where he said he never wanted to do a killing game again after World's End Club. So it looks like the idea is that there are people outside the academy trying to kill the students. And the headmaster's like, you guys get to be a student army to defend yourselves. But if you die, you die. Oh, well. Yeah, what do you mean? Someone did die, right? At the start. <laughs> I forgot about that, so. Um. <laughs> well, I figured it's the Danganronpa game. Someone's going to die. Yeah, there was no blood, though, so maybe, maybe, maybe she's not dead. <laughs> um, so this was so funny, because you see the animation, you know straight away. You don't even you don't even need to know. You just see the animation, and you're like, Oh look, it's the Danganronpa creators, what are they doing this time? Yeah. <laughs> and then we're, we're seeing the academy, we're seeing how it's very... They do the exact same like animations like Danganronpa where they zoom up on someone and have the dialogue underneath and all that. And I'm yeah. like, this is exactly like Danganronpa. This is, this is just the secret fourth game. I don't know what anyone's on about. <laughs> I mean, it's so much like Danganronpa that once I get to editing this video, you'll have the main theme of Danganronpa playing in the background. <laughs> yep, yep. And they even have a monochroma mascot. He's just a white ghost thingy. <laughs> well, the mascot in uh, Master Detective Archives was uh, a Shinigami, which is a Japanese demon. Yeah. Actually, they did hint that at the end of Master Detective Archives that that series would continue, so it makes me wonder, is this the continuation of that game? I don't know. We'll have to, it we'll doesn't have to see, seem like it, based on how Master I... Detective Archives ended, but it could be. You never know. Yeah, but this is hilarious. It's like, I did Master, Master Detective Archives and they came out, like, what, last year or something? <laughs> yeah. <laughs> and like, hello, we got another one. And it's like, what is this company doing? <laughs> 
They're just trying to put it in our brain that there's not going to be another Danganronpa, so have look alike instead. <laughs> They're just like, no more Danganronpa, but yet there's going to be Danganronpa anyway. Yeah. Because that's much. basically what Master Detective Archives was, was it was Danganronpa with one person instead of 16. Yeah, pretty much so. But it's not coming is... until 2025, so maybe they'll have a chance to fix those graphics until then. They'll never fix those graphics, what do you mean? <laughs> The 3D animation is going to look terrible as it always does because that's Danganronpa for you. <laughs> it wasn't terrible in Master Detective Archives. It wasn't great, but it was better than Danganronpa. Oh, uh, I'll, I'll sh yeah, you're right. I'll, I'll give that a pass, but it's not going to be better. <laughs> you know, credit where credit is due. The one thing Master Detective Archives nailed was the rain. Like, the way the puddles were, like, reflecting the neon lights and the splattering of the rain and... The way everyone was like covering their heads with their hats because it never stops raining. Like, why can't they put that level of polish into the entire game instead of just one element on the periodic table? I have no idea. <laughs> well, going from a game that had terrible graphics to a game that has terrific graphics, we ended off the direct with the very first ever <laughs> anything for Metroid Prime 4 Beyond. Oh! <laughs> now this is the bit, this is the game that I said at the beginning of the video that neither of us are going to play because I'm bad at shooters and she's bad at pretty much everything. <laughs> so you want to tell the audience uh, what your thoughts are for the poor fan base that had to wait seven years between announcement and gameplay? Oh, there's poor people. <laughs> All they Did got was hear? a logo. Did you hear? Because they have a, I think they have a like a convention at New York when uh, Nintendo Directs happened. Did you hear someone fainted when it was announced? I did not hear that, but Someone that is... full on fainted! That is dangerous. That's, that's, that's insane! It's, it's absolutely insane, but I didn't even need to see any sort of Samus. I just read Cos Cosmic and I was like, oh look, it's Metroid. <laughs> yeah, same here. I was also like, it's the closing thing in a direct, so it's got to be Metroid Prime 4. It especially had to because... be Metroid, or it had to be a, some other big anticipated game that people have been waiting for forever. Well, what so... you have to remember about the original Metroid Prime 4, before they restarted development, is that was announced in, I believe it was the same presentation that announced the Switch itself. So yeah. if they didn't make it a Switch title, it would have been like, okay, you guys are officially ridiculous, using a game to advertise a system that it doesn't end up being on. But they yeah. did confirm this is going to be a Switch title. Yeah. Like, if they if they didn't do it on on the Switch and they just announced, oh, this game isn't done yet, we're we'll bring it to the next console, I would have been fine with. I would have been like, that's fair, keep working on your game. Because I know they were working on it and then there were some issues, so they had to restart all over again. So that's why it took so long to make. Could have at least given but, a screenshot. Though. Yeah, I agree. There could have been some updates every now and then. But a couple years back, they did make up saying, look, we're still working on it, but have Metro Dread. So now we just need those poor Silk Song fans to get something. <sighs> those poor Silk Song fans. <laughs> look, I've said forever, I don't think it needs to be announced in a direct, but I wouldn't be mad if it was announced at one. So. Well, my thoughts on Metroid Prime 4 are that I tried playing Metroid Prime Remastered, and I was terrible at it. I think I didn't even get past the first area. But I respect it, because it's a shooter that emphasizes exploration more than shooting, which is why I love Tears of the Kingdom so much, is it actually disincentivizes you from engaging in combat because your weapons break too much. Well, admittedly, I guess Breath of the Wild did that more, but still, like, even though Metroid Prime 4 is a shooter, there's also a lot of knowing when to jump and looking for secrets and discovering things. And so I think that's a really cool twist on an overdone genre. And it's also, frankly, one of the best looking games I've seen on the Switch. Yeah, it's, it's so good. And I also just think that the, the whole like restarting development really paid off because I heard a lot of people saying, oh, they actually got it in 60 frames per second and they couldn't even get Tears of the Kingdom doing that. No, could not. <laughs> um, to be fair, that sorry. game had three layers with no loading screens though, so give them a little bit of slack. Though they could have picked a better subtitle or they might have just thrown a 
throwing that at a dartboard and said, we'll just go with this name. Well, <laughs> we'll just beyond. What you have to remember is that the uh, other Metroid Prime games didn't have terrific subtitles either. The first one was just Metroid Prime, the second one was Echoes, and the third one was Corruption. So they're all one word things. So <laughs> what? how do you beat Corruption? What would you have given it if you were in charge of the title? Well, I guess you don't well, know what the game seen... is like, but... Yeah, we haven't seen the game enough yet. So there's a, there's a figure of speech among the Socratic reasoning crowd that says, if you criticize someone for doing it wrong, you have to have a better situ uh, a better solution or you're a hypocrite. Yeah, that's true. Yeah, good, 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 good enough. Yep, that's a good quote. So I'll, I'll, I'll respond saying, let's see the game more first, then I'll decide. <laughs> I mean, we have seen the game more, but it looks pretty amazing. Yeah, it's pretty good. From what I've seen online, a lot of people are like, is that Silux? Is he a bad guy? And I'm like, I have no idea who that is. He wasn't even a spirit in Smash Brothers. But uh, it looks let's like- just, let's, I hope Ridley shows. Yeah, that would be cool. Ridley would have to, because I, I, I remember the whole, I know the whole Smash Bros story with Ridley, like why he wasn't in, original, in other Smash Bros games and why he could only be the Switch. So let's see if he could fit. <laughs> <laughs> well, he was in the original Metroid Prime on the GameCube, so yeah, I think it was think a matter he, of he was... the main villain, so... Yes, he is, uh, of the Metroid Prime series as a whole. But as far as why he couldn't fit in Smash, they uh, Masahiro Sakurai wanted to be true to his character, because Ridley is insanely big, and Samus is confirmed to be like 6 foot 3, so if she even looks small <laughs> next to Ridley, that's saying a lot. And he didn't want to have to ruin Ridley's identity. But then for Ultimate, he must have figured it out, or he read the Smash Ballot and it's just like, okay, I gotta stop making excuses. Because I <laughs> tried to make excuses not to have a story mode in Smash for Wii U, and everyone hated him for it. So he's like, okay, okay, I'll give you World of Light. Now Actually, everyone just, we just wants Waluigi. <laughs> well, we're getting Waluigi in Super Mario Party Jamboree, so there you go. Shut up and be happy. <laughs> oh, that's hilarious. And we're getting Waluigi with a new voice, too. So now doubly shut up and be happy. <laughs> uh, but yes, good job, Mitch. Good job, Nintendo. Thank you for finally making fans shut up with Metroid. Now we can move on with ourselves. I also so thought... So you have to wait till next year. Probably at the end of next year. <laughs> <laughs> I also... I don't think anyone else caught this except for me, but I could have sworn that whoever that guy was that stood in front of the red screen that was like, we know you've been waiting a while for this. I was like, oh, he's being so cheeky right now. <laughs> he's What's like really laying it on. Name. So all in all, um, now let's talk about the Direct itself as a whole. So there was that one Direct a few years ago where we called it the Farming Sim Direct. There was the JRPG Direct. There was the one where Mario RPGs came back. Do you have an overall name and grade for this one? And don't use letters, because I didn't go to school, so you gotta <laughs> use, like, good, great, amazing, like, use adjectives. Something uh, that we old people can understand. I was, I don't know, I was gonna say maybe the Redemption Direct, or something involving the word returning, because there's things that are coming back after a while of waiting and stuff, so... Yeah, yeah, actually, <laughs> I think that's perfect. <laughs> that, yeah. and we're finally getting... Uh, investigations 2 like yeah. that was like a DS game that never came to the West so I guess okay. in a sense spoil that's also a type spoil, of returning spoil, spoil the fans direct <laughs> honestly I think this may be like in the top three best directs I've ever seen I like agree. I think the I think only I one I can think of that might have topped it was 2019 where they revealed Banjo being in Smash <laughs> but if I remember you just correctly, need a banjo and kazooie game, and that will solve everything. <laughs> I do have a banjo kazooie game on the Switch. They have the original on Switch Online. That's true, but just imagine a brand new one with beautiful graphics, and they oh, bring oh. what's his name to to do the music again. Oh, that would be great. They did get Grant Kirkhope <laughs> to do the music for Sparks of Hope, though, and Kingdom Battle. Well, not all of it, but they did do they did for some of it. <laughs> he did all of Kingdom Battle, though. He did though. So. But yeah, that that that's what you need, and then I'm gonna hear you say this tops 2019. <laughs> well, I don't remember anything else about the 2019 direct besides it announced Banjo and Hero, and it closed with saying Tears of the Kingdom exists. I did 
I did watch it as well. I can't remember everything that was announced, but um, yeah, th that one was pretty good. I could see why people loved it. <laughs> but this, I might have to say, like with the exception of Banjo, like this was just a nice, solid. It had great things all around. Sure, it had some awful stuff like that Funko game, Hello Kitty. Like we all know that that franchise's track record on Nintendo systems. Uh, but I feel like. Yep. There were more hits than misses. And for yeah, the stuff that was already announced, I think it was a waste of time putting those in the direct when like Luigi's Mansion 2 is coming out in like seven days. Yeah. People have um, posted like the top four best things they saw in that direct, which was Mario and Luigi, uh, that Zelda game, Mario Party, and Metroid. Those are the best four that everyone loved. Swap that with Ace Attorney for me. Yeah, for you. I, I, I'd take Ace Attorney. I'll, I'll, I swap one of the, I'll swap Metroid for Fairy Tail. Well, if you remember, when we were uh, doing our predictions for what we wanted slash predicted, I said I wanted something to do with Mario, Zelda, Ace Attorney, Danganronpa, Zero Escape, or Deltarune. And I got most of those. You got most of them! And you, Zero on the other hand... Switch. You, on the other hand, all you could think of was, it'd be nice to have a new cruise in. Yeah, can we just, or at least bring back one for a port? Like, come on. They, they brought over Cruise and Blast, which was an arcade game. That's already on the Switch, and I didn't hear you salivating over that one. I was like, this isn't good enough for me. <laughs> like, it's literally a port of an arcade game. You wanted a port, you got one. I mean, in the back of my head, I was hoping for not something drastic for Splatoon 3, because it's actually. It's on its final catalog, but I wanted something announced for the next Spite Fest because it's a it's a themed one. Um, so I was like, they might just event uh, just announce what the next theme is, but they didn't. I was really surprised by that. I thought that'd be the perfect time to announce it, but maybe they thought oh, well. like Funkos more than they like Splatoon. Hey, Funkos are cool. I have a bunch sitting over here next to me. I have like eight over here. <laughs> but as a game, you know, no. I don't really do letters because I was homeschooled. So I would say like this is in the like absolutely phenomenal tier of adjectives. Like nine out of 10, 9.5 out of 10 probably would be a 10 if it wasn't for like that Funko game and them dragging on the Dragon Quest one. Dragon uh, Quest though was cool. I wish I, I they would have had more about Deltarune, but I figured it would be- I don't think Deltarune's gonna come anytime soon. <laughs> And then something Fire Emblem related would have been nice, but you know what? We got Fire Emblem engaged last year, so maybe they need a break. Hey, look, mate, you say that, but look what they've done with all the with all these other games. Like, we need a break. No, you don't. <laughs> Six yeah, because they are making another Zelda game, and two so, no excuse. In one year. <laughs> well, but I'm not I a don't game... think this is the last. At least. I don't think this is going to be the last, because I never said this is the last Nintendo du Switch Direct. Well, I think we're going to, considering there's more games coming out next year in the Switch, I think we'll probably get another one I mean, year. they had quite a few titles in there that said 2025. Donkey Kong Country Returns had like a January 2025. So I think there might be a period of time where between announce and release, We'll still have some Switch games to fill out the time waiting for the successor. Because they said that it would yeah. be before the end of the fiscal year, which is March 2025, but they didn't say that's when it would be released. They said that's when it would be announced. It was before March 2025. So that yeah, begs so the question we'll... of when will the successor come out then? So it could be the... that... Early next year, maybe. Or it could be like the middle of next year. Yeah. Um, Bottom line, the Switch is still going to have games in 2025. Yeah, I wonder if we'll get another Direct. Because they normally do one at the end of this year as well, but considering the amount of games that are coming out later this year, maybe not. But then again, the last, the, the end of year Directs they do, they announce that for the first half of 2025. So maybe they'll do one last hurrah. Who knows? They, but the word final has not appeared anywhere yet, so I don't call this the last one yet. <laughs> I never said it would be the last Switch Direct. That was everyone else that said that. Uh, yeah, that was everyone else. What are you guys on about? <laughs> I was the one that just said, hey, it's cool that we're getting more Switch stuff, because I'm not ready to move on yet. Uh, I don't think anyone is, to be honest. No one's ready to move on. Like pe I, People are like, do you think I have the money to buy the next thing? <laughs> Well, the Switch has already been like, I call it the miracle machine for me because so many things that I really, really wanted came true on the Switch. We got Banjo and Smash. That was something I wanted ever since Melee. 
uh, we got Banjo Kazooie on the Switch. We got, uh, I know I just said it was the Miracle Machine, but I'm blanking out as to what else. We're getting great Ace Attorney 2. All the Ace Attorney games, except for Professor Legion versus Phoenix Wright, are now on the Switch. All the Xenoblade games are on the Switch, except for X. You are getting Stanley um, Parable. You are getting Professor Layton eventually. Eventually, but that's another 2025 release. That is. I was trying to remember when that was you know, coming out. Yeah. Yeah, that. You, you've, you've been spoiled with a lot of stuff for the Switch, so. Doki Doki Literature Club. Yep. Uh, Nirvana Initiative. Those are like some 10 out of 10 amazing games, and I don't think Nintendo would have even come close to that kind of stuff on the Wii U. Yeah. Don't worry, there's some alternate timeline where the Wii U has done way better than we expected. <laughs> Well, the Wii U did have Breath of the Wild, so I'll give it that. What do you think was the best game in the Direct overall? Like, which one got you the most excited? Oh, obviously, Fairy Tale 2. But really? if I don't count... <laughs> but if I don't count that, something that baffled me, probably Mario Party. You're more excited about well. Fairy Tale than Mario Party? <laughs> Hey, I didn't hey, both those games I didn't expect. <laughs> so. I guess it does seem like it's more of a direct for me than for you looking at this list. Yeah, um, but if if I don't count Fairy Tale, I would say Mario Party would probably be the be the best one they, they showed in my opinion. Mario but maybe Party. I might be I might be biased because it's coming out of my birthday. <laughs> <laughs> Well, Mario Party Superstars was my number four game of the year of 2021, so hopefully the new Mario Party is up there. I know Ace Attorney is probably number one for me, then after that would probably be Mario Party, then Zelda, Mario and Luigi, Donkey Kong, 100 Line, uh, and then Stray, because the other games were your picks. Yeah, maybe, maybe I'll finally have enough games to do my own top 10 best 2024 games. <laughs> Oh, that'd maybe, be cool. or, or maybe, maybe at least top five, because I have to, fin I have to finish some games still, but finish up on. But yeah, <laughs> maybe you can retroactively make like best games of previous years. I could do that. Just, just sit down and be like, well, because I've been playing since this time, let me tell you. <laughs> and watch her miss out on all the good ones. Oh, uh, yes, that sounds about right. <laughs> so, my audience, thank you so much for watching. I hope you will treat my daughter with nothing but respect in the comments. <laughs> thank you very much for joining your dad on this wonderful experience. I'm sure your mother uh, would be very proud of you. And uh, would you like to say anything to your audience? Yes, thank you for watching. Um, I know it's been a while since we've done a direct, but we didn't do February because that was just the indie one. Who wants to talk about that? Right. Um, <laughs> so, uh, hopefully this won't be the last you'll see of us with Nintendo Directs. Because at the very least, they'll uh, uh, hopefully they'll do another one. But look, if they start doing the next consoles Direct, I will, at the very least, I'll buy the next console. <laughs> That's so, a lot to say to your audience as a simple goodbye. You don't want to like plug your stuff or anything like that? No. <laughs> okay, well, I guess you won't be watching her Twitch channel. Guess I won't be oh. leaving a link in the description. Oh well, oh. no viewers for you. So, no. so to everyone on my side, I hope you enjoyed our predictions. Thank you again, Paggle, for joining me. By the way, she is not actually my daughter. That was total baloney. For any of you that actually <laughs> believed it, um, I guess I'm good at telling jokes. <laughs> <laughs> so you all have a wonderful day, and until the next time, remember to keep the faith, stay epic, and God bless. Bye!